we've now mapped out the process from the browser request all the way to the returned HTML page. The browser makes a request, the web server looks in the public directory for it, then passes the request off to the routes, the routes picks a controller and an action, the controller gets everything together that it needs, then renders the correct view, the view pulls in any instance variables that it wants to display, and sends it back to the web server and onto the browser. That's the full request cycle for a single request. What we're missing, though, to close this loop is to have links on our template so that the user could then click on a link and start the cycle all over again. So in this movie, I want us to take a look at how we can put links onto our templates. You'll remember that HTML links look something like this. The text that we want to display for the link is inside the A tags, that in this case it's index page, and the target of where we want to send the link is inside those quotes right after href equals, so in this case demo index. That's what it's going to do, it's going to take us to the demo index page. Well guess what, we can absolutely use this link inside our templates. There's nothing wrong with it, it'll absolutely do what we would expect it to. So this is a perfectly valid approach. However, it's uncommon that you see this inside Rails applications because Rails gives us a helper method that's more powerful. In Rails, we can actually use the link to method. We're gonna put that inside the ERB tags with the equals in front of it because it's actually going to output. And what it's gonna output is an ahref. That's what it's gonna generate. But we're just gonna call link underscore two and then the first argument we're gonna to pass to it is the text that ought to display and the second is the target of where it ought to go. Now the value of that target can simply be demo index, just like we had for the other one. And it would generate the exact same ahref. But we have another option here, which is that we can pass in a Ruby hash. You remember Ruby hash with the curly braces, with the symbol for controller as the key for the value demo, and then the symbol for action as the key for the value index. That's going to do the exact same thing. We're just being very explicit and clear that what we want is this controller and this action. And if we're working inside the same controller, Rails will assume that the controller we want is the same controller, so we only need to specify it if we're changing controllers to a different controller. And I know we only have one right now. Later we'll have several and we'll be moving around. But for now, because we're gonna be inside the demo controller, if we wanted a link on the hello page that would take us to the action page, all we have to say is inside a hash, action is index. I want you to get used to writing these kinds of hashes because we're going to make a lot of use of them in Rails. And what Rails is actually going to do is have a standard way that it's convert these link target hashes into a URL for us. So even though I know it might be tempting just to use the standard string, you're going to want to learn and use this hash format instead. Let's try one now. So in my simple CMS app, I'm just going to open up the hello template. And all I'm going to do is add a link here. So let's just drop down here a line. I'm going to make a new one, link to, right? And then I'm going to have two values. The first value is the text, my first link. And the second can be just simply slash demo slash index. We want to try that out and see if that works. But the way we really want to do it is we want to put a hash here and inside there put action index. I know it's a little more typing, but there are a lot of benefits that come with doing it that way. Let's load this up and take a look. So you want to make sure that your web server is running. Mine still is. And Firefox, and let's just do demo hello. There it is, my first link. When I roll over it, you'll notice that where it's going to take me to is localhost colon 3000. You see that down at the very bottom of my browser? That's because it's reducing down demo index to the root URL. Why does it do that? It's because it's using my routes file to figure out what the URL ought to be. So the routes file plays a double role. It not only takes care of requests that are coming in, but it also translates requests that are going out because those are gonna be coming back in soon, right? So it makes sense that we wanna make sure that whatever we send out, we're ready to handle when it comes back in. So it's going to try to shorten it as much as it can. So localhost colon 3000 is the root route. That's the one that I've specified. So if I go ahead and click it, you'll see that it takes me there, which if we just take a quick look, at demo controller is redirecting me, right? So right now it just redirects me there. Let's go ahead and comment out that redirect for now. So now it's gonna display the index page again. Let's close this window and let's open up index. Hello from the index page. And let's do link to go back to hello page. And once again, we'll put in our hash action and we'll make this one be the hello page. 
Okay, I'll save it. Let's reload our first hello page. There we are, my first link. Click on it, go back to hello page. Now notice this time when I roll over it, look at what URL it's gonna take me to. It's gonna take me to demo hello. So this time it does take me to it, but just notice that it does shorten it in this case because that routes file gave it a rule that allowed it to shorten it all the way back to the root. And it said, hey, that's actually a little shorter and a little cleaner. So I'll go ahead and shorten it for you.